Welcome to the Kingdom Mastermind Podcast, a community for women who love God and want to thrive as joyful lifestyle entrepreneurs. Your adventure starts now. Here's your host, Ann McDonald. The rest of my life is the best of my life. Do you believe it yet, Kingdom Masterminder? I know it is hard and it can be hard to say things where you just feel like your whole body is saying, nah, I don't believe it. This week, we're finishing up our four-part series on the power of our words. So before we take a break to thank our sponsors, let's see if we can actually say that with a semi-straight face. Let's try it again. The rest of my life is the best of my life. And the best of my life is the rest of my life. And everything I touch is indeed supposed to be incorruptible like gold. It's supposed to be under my feet. That's the authority that God bought for us on the cross. All right, let's take a quick break and then we'll be right back this week with practical tacticals to change how we speak. Do you have an idea for an online information product business, but you haven't been able to finish it? Patrick and I are hosting a live twice a week, 12 week coaching immersive with lifetime access to coach you through the process of building out that online business. Now finish 2020 strong while the rest of the world struggles with noise. You know that God is still on the throne and it's time to build in such a way that the kingdoms of God become the kingdoms of this earth. There is no time like now to get started. Visit www wwwinfo to income challenge.com for more information. Kingdom Entrepreneur, don't let another year go by without finishing those God ideas. A year from now, imagine how different life could be. Visit wwwinfo to income challenge.com now. I'm smart and getting smarter every day. I'm good and getting better every day. I'm healthy and getting healthier every day. I'm wealthy and getting wealthier every day. I have multiple streams of residual income. How do those things sound to you? Would you like to be able to wake up every day and have those simple, pithy declarations roll off your tongue? Hi, this is Ann McDonald, and I want to welcome you back to part four of the Kingdom Mastermind podcast series on the power of our words. I once heard Bill Johnson say that our words create worlds. And that what we're presently living in, well, our personal situation, is actually a result of how we've been speaking. That's a pretty heavy revelation when we look around and we think, "Uh uh-oh, it's like I got nobody to blame but myself. So I'm trying to keep it light this week because I really do want to give us practical tacticals on how to actually change how we speak. I don't want this subject to be so heavy that it, well, that it takes us down. It actually weighs us down and depresses us. I want to speak in such a way that you have hope right now for the future. And that you choose to believe that you can change how you speak. So how does it start? Well, over the past three episodes, we've been talking about the power of our actual words. Now, I spent a lot of time being incredibly negative, not necessarily out to the world, but very negative towards myself. And what I found was that my soul, the way I was thinking, the way I was feeling, my emotions all had struggles that... Well, as I read the word of God, I wasn't supposed to have. So how did I change? I'm not going to tell you it was super easy. It was super happy all the time. It was super, you know, once I decided to change, it was all roses and candy canes. It, It wasn't. However, what I did learn to do was to start filling my cup with good words and not worry so much about the bad ones. The Bible says, out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. Well, what does that mean if we're saying negative words towards ourselves all the time? And how do we actually change it? Well, very simply, if we think of our heart as a glass filled with water, our goal should be to have living water coming out of us all the time. Good, fresh, living water of God. But if we're having that negative self-talk all the time, our words are not saying what the blood of Jesus is saying all the time. They're not speaking life and hope and prosperity and possibility. How do we actually change? 
I do not think we can change by consistently focusing on what we're doing wrong. I actually think we have to take that glass of water, if you will, and start filling it with the good stuff. And the more we fill it with the good stuff, the more the bad stuff just has no place to land. So when I started to think about changing my words, I just started making those pithy declarations, those daily things that honestly, I did not believe when I first started saying it. And I I will tell you, there are times I wake up and I'm like, the rest of my life is the best of my life. (laughs) It's not feeling very true. I mean, I'm about to turn 56 and I'm thinking, you know, I got some things in my life that need to be nipped and tucked and, (laughs) you know, Botoxed or whatever. And I'm thinking, how is the rest of my life the best of my life? And how is the best of my life the rest of my life? I mean, we got to get honest about what we're actually thinking and feeling and then be comfortable enough to be known and to say, I'm going to choose to speak differently, even though I may not feel it and even though I may not see it. Why? Because the word of God says And if we're going to actually learn and take responsibility for behaving from belief, we actually have to choose to believe that the power of our positive words is going to outweigh the power of our negative words before we see it. So what does that look like on a practical basis? Well, I have in front of me a list right now of something called simple pithy declarations. Now, I don't get religious over my pithy declarations, my daily declarations, but I do make a habit of it. There's a big difference between making a habit of something, a small daily habit, and getting super religious, like I have to do this. If I don't do this, my life isn't going to change. No, 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 no. Remember, this is all about relationship with the living God. As a kingdom-minded female entrepreneur, whether you are in vocational ministry or traditional business models, doesn't matter. You know the value of relationships. You know the value of a relationship with a fantastic customer. You know the value of a relationship with a longtime donor. Well, our relationship with the Lord is the same thing. You want to have this honorable exchange. And when I got a hold of the revelation that Jesus and Jesus' blood was speaking a better word over me than I was, and when I wasn't speaking what he was speaking, I was the one in the wrong, not him. It was this, I'll I'll just call it what it was. It was a come to Jesus moment in the fear of the Lord. It's like, I don't want to be against God with respect to myself. So what did I do? Very simply, I typed out a bunch of simple one-line declarations that I say almost every day. And I try to get myself in the habit of just filling my cup up with good words. What happens? Eventually, there are so many good words that are just kind of rolling off my tongue that I don't actually have time to have any more of those negative words. Do they come out? Yes, they do. In fact, just yesterday, I woke up, I told my husband, I said, I'm having kind of a hard morning. I feel like I woke up on the wrong side of the bed. And I immediately caught myself. I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. There's a narrative in the spirit here that I actually don't want to choose to agree with. Did I feel icky? Yes. Did I feel kind of angry and cranky? Yes. Was I a little frustrated? Absolutely. Were my words about to run off? Yep. And then I caught myself and I was like, okay, Lord, what's going on in the spirit realm? And I realized that I was coming under something kind of corporately in the spirit realm. Now, here's a word of encouragement for any of you who are prophets or apostles or evangelists or pastors or teachers, basically anyone who is breathing and has a relationship with the Lord. There's a lot going on in the spirit realm. And sometimes what we think isn't actually us, it's just something that the spirit realm is broadcasting. We have to be aware of it and put it under our feet. And that's what happened yesterday. By about 11 o'clock in the morning, I said to my husband, I need to go out, take a walk and clear my head. I actually have to go change my location, which I did. When I came back, I was in a much better place and I was actually able to identify and to target something in the spirit realm that I felt like was trying to get my agreement with it, with my words. Here's the key. 
kingdom woman of God, your words have authority, especially if you are in the office of the pastor, the office of the teacher, the office of the evangelist, the office of the prophet, or the office of the apostle. And those office positions Don't just apply to vocational ministry. You can be a marketplace apostle. You can be a marketplace prophet. Your words have authority, even if you don't understand what your assignment or calling is in this season. That's why I wanted to tackle the power of our words. We have the ability to change and to shift the atmosphere and outcomes of entire cities, states, nations, we actually have authority that we don't know about. And it starts with how we speak. So what are some of the easy, fast ways to change how we speak? Very simply, I start with one-liners. The rest of my life is the best of my life. The best of my life is the rest of my life. Start there. Make a list, five, 10, 15 single sentence declarations that are, as one of my mentors calls them, pithy, short, to the point, not hard to remember, easy to bring to the surface when you need it. As a 55, soon to be 56 year old, middle-aged woman with an online business, one of the things that I can kind of come up against is, hmm, I'm not looking so young and crisp on those videos anymore. So what do I do when that thought tries to land someplace? I think, no, I'm pretty and getting prettier every day. I'm healthy and getting healthier every day. Now, if those things sound ridiculous to you, I want to take you back to scripture. I want to take you back to Moses. Moses was pretty old when it was time for him to go. But do you know that the scripture says that Moses had not lost his vigor, nor had his eyes grown dim? That means Moses wasn't in need of reading glasses or a cane to walk up those mountains. We have to understand that God's reality is so different than we actually think it is. And we need to get back into the truth of the word of God and let the word of God read us and start to adjust our words to speak like the actual word of God. I shared this with you guys. I'm 55 near 56. I do not need reading glasses. Anytime my eyes start to get a little wonky, I'm like, God, I remind you, Moses's eyes did not grow dim. That's just one area of grace on my life. Now, I'm not going to stand up and say anybody who has reading glasses that they're not walking with the Lord. That would be absolutely ridiculous, right? We are human living in a fallen world and we each have different graces on our life. But that was one of the things that I got a hold of early on. I was like, Lord, if this is true and your word really does work, then I'm going to remind you almost daily, Moses didn't need reading glasses. So I don't want to need reading glasses. I want my eyes to be strong and full of vigor. I don't want them to grow dim. I want them to see everything that you want them to see every single day for the rest of my life. Now, there may be areas that you have faith in. I'm not quite as faithful and have as much belief just yet in the health realm or in the fitness realm. I'm a little soft around the middle right now. However, I get up and say, I'm healthy and getting healthier every day. As a former athlete, one of the things that I had to combat was a bad belief about retiring from a sport or not doing great when you get older. So every day I have a series of very simple pithy statements that I say to help build my belief. So if you are feeling like, man, Anne, I am in process. I got glasses. I got a nice little, nice little round belly. You know, I got some extra stuff on my hips. My business isn't doing so well. I want to give you a word of encouragement. First, do not give up. Okay. I hope that you can hear in my voice. There is no judgment. There are no stones in my hand. And I want to encourage you to kind of laugh with me. Enjoy the process of growth. If I shared with you how sarcastic I sounded when I first started saying the rest of my life is the best of my life. I mean, it was not honoring. It was not even close. 
And yet I felt the grace of the Lord on it. The, I, I felt the Lord basically communicate to me, I know, it sounds ridiculous. I, I know, I know you don't believe it, but I want you to stick with it. So when I say I'm healthy and getting healthier every day, there's part of me that's still kind of like, yeah, right. However, I still say it every day and I give God an opportunity to breathe on it. We're going to take a quick break to thank our sponsors and we'll be right back with more practical tips for you to change how you speak so that you sound more like God and less like the enemy. Do you desire to become all that God designed you to be? Are you missing a community of women where you are safely heard, encouraged, and practically equipped? Kingdom Women's Mastermind is your solution. It's time to do life alongside other powerful, committed to excellence women of God. Whether you are building out a vocational ministry platform, a social marketing business, a traditional or online business, Kingdom Women's Mastermind provides off the charts acceleration in wisdom. Monthly trainings, weekly smart goal check-ins, pop-up training, and mentorship. Kingdom Women's Mastermind is missing only one person, you. Visit us at www www.kingdommastermind.net to fill out your application today. It's your time to prosper, woman of God. Again, visit us at www.kingdommastermind.net and apply today. I finish stuff easily. I'm a finisher. I have a finisher anointing. I actually do. Kingdom women, kingdom entrepreneurs, How nice would it be to actually start a project and finish it? Well, one of the things that we have to start doing is watching how we speak. This week, we are in part four of a four-part series on the power of our words, how our words create worlds. And one of the things I actually do carry is a finisher anointing. One of the things that happens when people get around me, either in my coaching programs or in my businesses, is they start to finish stuff. They start to prosper in ways that they haven't prospered before. They start to get unhindered. Why? Because those are some of the graces on my life. Those did not come, quote, naturally to me. If you talked to me in 2008, I would have told you that I was frustrated, angry, couldn't finish anything, had trouble with tech, and wasn't prospering the way that the Word of God said I was supposed to be prospering. And I spent about five years grumbling and complaining and not speaking in the way that God wanted me to speak. Then, I'm just going to say it, I got the fear of the Lord on me. I started to deal with what was coming out of the overflow of my heart just like that. What does that mean for you and me today? Practically, tactically. Well, for me, all I did was I didn't focus on the negative stuff that I was saying. I just started to ignore it. And I started to speak what the word of God was speaking, not in 25 minute long quoting scripture, standing up, you know, raising my hands, praying in the spirit and declaring like Moses. No, I just started with pithy, short declarations and statements. Things like, I'm healthy and getting healthier every day. I finish stuff. I make money while I sleep. You see how easy those things are? Well, once we start to speak, what we do is we give God an opportunity to perform the word that we're speaking. Just like God said in the beginning, light be and light was, Jesus says in his word, I have given you, daughter of God, I have given you, kingdom woman, kingdom female entrepreneur, kingdom female vocational minister, I have given you the keys to the kingdom. What does that mean? When you speak, the spirit world is listening. It's actually waiting to see what they're going to fulfill or not fulfill. So when you just start to speak every day, I'm wealthy, I'm healthy, I have great wisdom, I finish things, I make money while I sleep, everywhere I go becomes a perfect health zone. When you start to speak like that on a daily basis, things begin to change. One of my other mentors talks about keeping a calendar of about 90 days And learning to evaluate 
How am I speaking today? Did I say something negative about myself? Did I go all day and not say anything negative about myself? Just giving ourselves a little check mark if we came through an entire day without saying something negative. I like that example. I was shocked when I first started doing that. I was like, uh, ruh row, <laughs> that's a problem. Because I'd get to maybe, you know, I was okay until about 4 5 o'clock. And then the grumbling started to happen. My mom used to call five o'clock the witching hour. Well, we know in the spirit realm, there's a lot of junk that goes on at certain times during the day. I don't focus on that. I literally ignore it. But what I do do is I start to speak very intentionally at certain times of my day. When I wake up, before my feet even hit the ground, I am, and my husband will attest to this, I say the rest of my life is the best of my life. The best of my life is the rest of my life. And everything I touch turns to gold. When Before I go to sleep, I'm always saying things like, I make money in my sleep. Thank you, Lord, for providing for me. Not a lot. I'm not reading 50 scriptures. I'm just reminding the Lord of what he promises me in his word. During the middle of the day, three o'clock, five o'clock, six o'clock, when I'm getting kind of cranky, I'm like, "Uh aha, nope. Everything I touch turns to gold. I'm healthy. I'm wealthy. I'm wise. I have the spirit of wisdom. I'm a finisher. So what is it this week? that you need to add to your vocabulary so that the words that are coming out of the overflow of your heart are powerful and positive, that give God an opportunity to prosper you and to bring life. Woman of God, you have something that the world needs. One of the biggest things that will pave the way for you to prosper is learning to speak what God is speaking about you through you. Give God an opportunity to prosper you. Start with those simple, pithy declarations. I'm going to read a few more so that you have some simple inspiration. I am intentional. I am important. I am worthy. I'm leaving a legacy. I'm energetic. I get stuff done. I have all the time I need to finish. I'm the right age for what God has for me today. I get up early and love it. I multiply stuff easily. I finish stuff easily. I only say what the blood of Jesus is saying. I only do what the blood of Jesus is doing. I have multiple residual streams of income. I'm wealthy and getting wealthier every day. I'm smart and getting smarter every day. I like people. Do you see how easy that is? Now those may not feel true to you when you first start to speak them. But kingdom woman of God, I want to encourage you. Your words have power and the spirit realm is waiting to see what you have to say. Make sure to check out those show notes at www.kingdommastermind.net. And I want to invite you to subscribe, rate, review, and share the Kingdom Mastermind podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and anywhere awesome podcasts are found. Until next week. Choose joy. Thanks for listening to today's episode. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, review, and share. If you'd like more material and have a desire to stay connected, please reach out to Anne at www.kingdommastermind.net. Next week, we're going to start a series on business basics. My name is Ann McDonald, and I want to welcome you to the Kingdom Mastermind Podcast, where each week we speak words of hope and life and encouragement into female lifestyle entrepreneurs in both vocational ministry and traditional business. What is it that God wants us to provide in a business setting? How do we do that? What do we actually need to prosper? Well, for over 30 years, I've been in the entrepreneurial space. Most of my, quote, ministry has been outside the walls of the traditional church. So we're going to start a series on what do you actually need to prosper? What is it that sets the multimillionaires apart from the hundred thousand heirs? Is that even a word? What is it that sets the people who are making six figures apart from, well, the ones who are only making five figures? 
We're going to go there and we're going to talk about it. Why? Because you have something that the world needs. And in our present system, money is one of the measurement tools that we use. Is it everything? Absolutely not. However, it is a tool and we've got to get a hold of it, especially as kingdom minded women of God. So we're going to go there in our next series on business basics. Make sure to tune in next week and let's finish the year out strong.